Good day, I'm Dr. Tim Floyd, Associate Professor of Mathematics at Georgia Highlands College, and this video is one in our series of videos intended to help students with beginning ideas in algebra and for use in our college algebra class, Math 1111. So this video discusses one of the foundation functions that we have in the course, which are constant or identity functions and also linear functions. The purpose of this video then is to define and describe constant functions, identity functions, and linear functions, and to give examples of each and show how to graph them. Constant function is generally defined as f of x equals some constant value c, where c is a real number. Now if you remember your real numbers are all the, the integers, positive negatives, zeros of whole numbers, uh, fractions, decimals, square roots, and other values. There will be a, another video you can observe about the real, all the real numbers and how they're formed. And in this case then c is one of those real numbers. So let's say we have an example of f of x equals negative 2. Now, if we are going to graph a function, if you'll remember, we will, I'm going to make a table, a t-table, as some teachers would call this. And let me pick just a few values for x, and we're going to put these values into the function. Uh, so we're going to do f of negative 2. Well, in this case, because this is a no place to put a value of x in. There is no x here. Therefore, the output value for this function is going to be the constant value negative 2. Now, if I do f of negative 1, we also get negative 2. f of 0 is negative 2. f of 1 is negative 2. And f of 2 is negative 2. So in this case, all of the outputs, there is a constant output of negative 2, no matter what we insert for x. So in this case, if I go to my graph and plot these ordered pairs, so if I go to negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 2, and if we continue with these then, uh, you will see that what we will have here then is a horizontal line through these points at y equals negative 2. And this then is what all constant functions will do. Whatever value the c value is, whatever real number it is, you would have a horizontal line intersecting the y-axis at that c value. So the very first, in fact this is the basic first kind of function, is a constant function. Now the next kind of function that we have is called the identity function and it's typically defined as f of x equals x. So our output is very simple here. If we make a table with order, uh, pick some values for x. So let's say I'm going to use those same values that I began with. Then as I substitute, if I do f of negative 2 equals, I'm going to substitute, I do have a variable to substitute the negative 2 into. There's nothing to do with it though. We get simply negative 2. And so if I, I'm going to do this for one more, and then I hope you can see the pattern then, that if I substitute negative 1, there's nothing that happens to change this. This is simply negative 1. So anything I input, I get the same value out. Now, if we plot these ordered pairs, then, and if you have issues with why I'm plotting these ordered pairs, uh, don't understand that, then uh, you need to get some assistance on uh, 
plotting on the coordinate plane, the x-y axis. And as you'll see then, uh, if I were to go to infinity by selecting any real number to put in for x, what we would have then is a line that would travel through these points. And this line then would continue, excuse me, this line would continue on at this same angle, and it would go on into infinity to, as we input uh, values of x more positive, more negative, this line is just going to continue in the same pattern, and that is the identity function. There is nothing that will change if we take our input, there is nothing that changes once we input the value of x, it doesn't change it from that input value. So the x input and the y output are identical for each ordered pair. And that is called the identity function. Now that in itself is not very interesting. But let's move on to its partner, or its as it evolves, we have what we have come to know, if I'll get my pen here, as the linear function. Now we'll have an x, but we will have something that changes the values. Now if you remember from uh, studying of your algebra in your other uh, times in your life, in this case x is our input value, and in this m is typically the value that we call slope and the b value is the y-intercept. And this structure then is the definition of a linear function. Uh, also I will say that x is to the first power and that is really the driving force that makes this a linear function. If the power is higher then we do not have a straight line as the graph. We would have a other, we would have curves. Okay. So, in this case, let me create a linear function. So let's say we have uh, 2x minus 4. And in this case, let me go back and I'll just continue to use the same values that I used before. So if I then substitute those values in, now, as you see, what happens is we have values that change the output. It's not just the constant negative 2 as we input, but we're going to do 2 times negative 2 minus 4. So in this case we get negative 8. So if we do f of negative 1, and if we continue this process, we will get other values. And this will also lead us to a line graph as we had with the constant function, but because this uh, changes the, the values of the slope and the y-intercept, change our output as we increase or as we change our input, then we have a different situation. So I have the values that we've calculated here. Um, we'll take a moment and look, make sure that I did those correctly. And now what I'm going to do is plot these points and uh, I'm have that and then we have and we have this. And as you see then, if we have correctly plot these values, they do present themselves as being on a line. So if now I connect these values with a line, and what we have then is the relative of the identity function, which the inputs and the outputs were the same as the input, then 
in this case because of the slope and the y-intercept that we have that alters the input value by these values. We now get, still we get a line, but now it does not come through the y-axis at the same location that the identity function did, and it is also a steeper line. If you remember then from your basic algebra, if the m is negative, the line would actually be traveling in the different direction, opposite direction going downhill from left to right. This one is going uphill from left to right. So I hope this has helped you in your understanding of the foundational functions of the constant, the identity, and the linear function. And you can observe our other companion videos that will take us through the other foundational functions. And if you view these together, you'll begin to see the evolution of the function as we go through the other foundational functions. I hope you uh, observe our other videos. If you have any comment or question, if you'll see my email address is here below. Thank you for your time and I hope you have a wonderful day.